Nick Ferrari at Breakfast on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Nine minutes before eight, come back to your views concerning the so-called pandemic and these exempt list of exemptions in a moment. Let's get more detail on that idea of the exemption, though, first, from Environment Secretary George Eustace, who joins me now. Um, I've been through the 16 sectors that have been uh, featured here. How is it determined that they would be uh, uh, allowed this uh, extra leeway? Good morning, Secretary of State. Good morning. Well, look, there's, there's two uh, separate things that we've, we've done. The first is a, a much bigger intervention on the food supply chain. So we've identified already close to 500 sites, including around 170 supermarket depots, and then uh, several hundred of the um, largest, most strategically important manufacturers. And um, we're starting from today in in the first 15 of those depots, and we'll be rolling out quickly that where they have staff who are pinged and are asked to uh, isolate, they can continue to come into work do a daily test at work and provided that test stays negative they can keep working so that's the most significant uh, thing which is going to affect well over 10,000 people uh, playing crucial roles in the food supply chain Uh, and that applies to them whatever their job might be whether they're a forklift driver or picking up goods um, that that will apply to them the the separate thing is is a narrower one for some of the smaller sectors key roles for instance technical jobs in things like nuclear power stations or in the water industry uh, or in the rail network key people that are essential to keep those uh, services um, running there's going to be a narrow exemption for particular jobs um, and um, those businesses will be able to contact the department concerned and say they've got a list of people that they need to have back and we can authorize it okay um one of your colleagues, Tobias Elwood, has intimated that we might have to call on the military. Uh, others have said it's not the case. What do you understand to be the reality, Mr Eustace? Um, it's not the case. Uh, we've we've taken the, the right steps now, obviously, to ensure that uh, the food supply chain uh, works. We've acted quickly to, to do that when we saw absence levels starting to continue to rise this week. Um, and we don't have a, a need for that at the moment. But look, there's always um, a, um, a military contingency force that's on standby at all times, because if we have a flood event or another um, emergency of some sort, you always have to be able to call on them. So they are always there on on standby should they be needed but they're not needed at the moment. Um, You probably have time to see this so let me tell you that the Adam Smith Institute is suggesting that the figure of people who've been pinged could rise to more than two million next week noting that the 16 sectors that you and your colleagues have freed up why can't that be the case for everyone if you have had your two jabs if you'll have a daily test why can't everyone go back to work? Well, that will be the case, obviously, from uh, the middle of August. Still uh, some way now, off, respectfully, Secretary of State. It, well, it's a, it's a few weeks off. Um, you know, for now, we want people to try to bide with us on this. Very difficult. I know it's very frustrating. But we know that if... Um, People have had close proximity to someone who's infected. They're five times more likely to get infected themselves. And we know that if people uh, do isolate when asked, it does dampen the spread of the virus. And what we're really just trying to achieve here over these next uh, few weeks is to dampen the spread of the virus, hopefully get it tipping back down the other way so that we'll know exactly where the peak in hospitalizations is. And if we if it accelerates too quickly, uh, the concern we've got is that that peak in hospitalizations uh, might be too high. That's what we are mindful of. That's what we're cautious uh, about. But of course, you know, we keep everything under review. So we've acted swiftly yesterday to ensure uh, that we can um, make sure that those key bits of the food supply chain can operate. We'll keep everything under review in the next few weeks. Okay. Just coming back finally on this aspect, these uh, the sectors that are on the so-called let-off list, uh, a lot to do with food. Why nothing to do with faith? Why not clergymen, clergywomen, rabbis? Why don't you care about them? Well, look, I care about everybody, and we want everybody to be able to get back to life as normal. And um, everybody's going to be able to uh, adopt an approach like this from the middle of August. But the reason we've had very narrow exemptions in food, it's for the obvious reason that we will never, ever take risks with the food supply chain. So we've acted swiftly uh, and across the board there. Uh, And then on these other sectors, uh, we're we're focusing on just uh, those few key jobs. I I get that. But for for many people, particularly at trying times such as these, Secretary of State, their faith is very important. Why aren't vicars and rabbis and imams, why aren't they on the list? 
Well, look, faith is important, and obviously well, even not, during the... Not pand- to your government, it's not, is it? Because well, it's not on the 16 um, sectors, Secretary of State. And if it was important, it, it would be one of the 16 sectors. And people haven't been able to go to church, churches are still locked up, people can't sing in church. Your government does not respect faith, does it, Mr Eustace? Well, I, I don't accept that. We, we, well, we, why we, can't of course, why aren't we, on the list then, and rabbis. Well, well, they're not on the list as as uh, as key workers because well, I would say they're pretty they key, have... wouldn't you? Or do you think a vicar's well, a key worker, Mr. Eustace? Um, I, I don't think. Um, no, no. It's a simple yes same... or no. Is an imam a key worker? Is a rabbi a key worker, Mr. Eustace? Um, they're not a key worker no, in the not. sense that they no, not in the sense that someone working in the food industry getting food on people's plates is. And, and I think what you have to understand is we're talking here about a, a few weeks that we want everybody to be back uh, to normal. Everybody's in roles that ha- are important uh, and, and uh, everybody's uh, role is valued. But for this purposes, we've had to focus on those uh, crucial key workers in those key sectors to make sure the just, food supply. Just, just lastly on this point, Mr. Eustace, Eustace a vicar. A priest, a rabbi, who visits a mourning family, a family in grief. To me, that's a key worker, but not to you. Well, look, during the pandemic, obviously, they've continued to do all of that work um, over the phone, calling people and doing, um, uh, you know, uh, online um, um, uh, you know, uh, services for their congregation. It's been difficult for everyone. Uh, but look, this is a narrow exemption that we've got for key sectors like the food industry, which is obviously a, a different sort of level. OK, can we go to France just briefly? I know I've only got you for another moment. You'll be aware that the rates of the so-called beta variant now have dropped quite dramatically. Why do we still have the extra sort of amber plus for people returning from France, Minister? Secretary of State, sorry. Well, and look, these are these are reviewed uh, regularly. Obviously, earlier this week, we took quite a, a significant decision, which is to say that people that have been double jabbed can return from an amber list country without the need uh, to quarantine. Uh, there was a reason at the time that the advice was we should put uh, France on that amber list. As you say, it was concern about the, the beta variant and the fact that the, the vaccine might be um, slightly less effective uh, against that. But if, as those rates come down, obviously the evidence will change and it can be reviewed and we'll want to be putting countries like France uh, back onto the amber list in the normal way. Lastly, I imagine a number of your colleagues share concerns. The figures are out that only a third of 18 to 29s uh, have, had the, have, had the, have not had the jab. I'm so sorry. A third of 18 of us have not had the jab. So the take up is markedly lower than older age groups. What could be done? How, how can these younger people be persuaded? Because we need, if we're going to get there, we need to get our... Brothers, sisters, children, grandchildren. We need to get them over the line, Mr. Eustace. Yes, and so we're, we're doing we're doing a lot to try to uh, promote the the vaccination among those uh, age groups. You're right; the uptake uh, so far has been lower than we would like. We know we have made clear that by the end of um, September, because nightclub environments are particularly high risk, being as they are uh, very crowded and very enclosed spaces, we have said that we're 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 going to um, have a requirement that people are double jabbed by the end of September in order to go to those venues. Or, or passports, besides that, so-called passports, of course, Mr. Yusuf. So well, they're still it's... a reality, are they? Yes, well, it, we, we are. We have to keep all of the tools at our disposal as we chart a way out of this. And um, we don't want to use it um, more than is necessary. But we've already said that in the case of nightclubs, these are, um, you know, high risk, highly enclosed uh, environments. And so we think it's a proportionate thing to do there. But we are separate to that, just encouraging uh, young people to come forward to get vaccinated. We've all got a role to play to, to ensure that we, we get the whole population, that level of immunity that can enable us to return to normal. And lastly, returning to normal, of course, there is a party conference hopefully later in the year, although some of your colleagues are suggesting they won't attend the Conservative conference if the two jabs are made mandatory. What's your message to them, Secretary of State? Well, look, uh, the party conferences are still some way off, to be honest. Uh, The the position that we've set out is uh, we think uh, this idea of showing that you've been double jabbed might well be important, particularly on things like large conferences that are indoors or uh, business events that are that are indoors. Um, we, we need to keep these tools at our disposal at the moment. It may well be that as we get through um, uh, September, uh, that things will be looking much better and that we won't need to do that. But at the moment, uh, we think we need to keep these tools at our disposal and keep them on the table should they be needed. Grateful for your time. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Environment Secretary George Eustace, appearing here on LBC when at one minute after eight, the news is next. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. 
From Global's newsroom at 8 o'clock, more than 10,000 people in the food sector will be able to avoid self-isolation if they're identified as a close contact of someone with coronavirus. The government's agreed to let those